Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to the online MBA information session. We are very excited to have everyone joining today and what's likely hopefully your lunch hour, or possibly even your mid-afternoon, depending on where you're located in the country. I wanted to go over some quick logistics to today's uh, presentation. Uh, in order to minimize background noise, the presentation is in broadcast-only mode. You can ask questions at any time by using the chat and Q&A feature on the right bottom of your screen. You can do that throughout the presentation. And a recording of this session will be emailed to you after the webinar. Going over today's agenda, we'll do some quick introductions of the people that will be presenting. We'll go over a little history, rankings, and accreditations. We'll also go over uh, military and veteran student benefits, the online MBA program overview, admissions requirements and curriculum, uh, international field study, a day in the life, which is always great, networking opportunities, and then at the end, a live Q&A. Uh, myself, my name is Carlos Bergano. Um, I am the first person I'll be talking. I am a senior enrollment advisor uh, for the online MBA program. My role here, along with my team, is to provide information and help guide students uh, through the enrollment process, the application, and answer any additional questions they have. Uh, next up, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to Matt Beer. Uh, Matt, would you like to take over and introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you with us. My name is Matt Beer. I'm a military veteran affairs manager uh, at the Carson College of Business, and look forward to uh, sharing some of our resources with you uh, throughout the session. Uh, over to you, Mitch. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Uh, yeah, my name is Mitch Swanner. I'm the Director of Admissions and Student Services for uh, the Grad and Online Programs at uh, WSU for the Carson College of Business. And essentially, my team and I oversee all of the day-to-day uh, -day operations from recruitment through uh, graduation uh, for our students. So uh, thank you, everyone, for, for being here. And then I'll kick it over uh, to Christopher for the last intro. Yeah, hey, uh, my name's Christopher Mutchler. I graduated back in June of uh, this year and here to share some of my experience and uh, answer any questions you might have. Uh, back to Carlos. Excellent. Thank you so much, everybody, for your introductions. Uh, we're going to turn it over to Mitch, who I believe is going to talk a little bit more about uh, WSU. Yeah, thank you, Carlos. Uh, excuse me, one second. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so we are located on <clears throat> the eastern side of the state. I don't know um, how many of you, if, where, if you're familiar with um, uh, with Washington State and Pullman specifically, but uh, we are le located on the eastern side of the state, right on um, the the Idaho border. So um, for those of you who may know where Seattle is, we're about a four and a half <clears throat> maybe a five-hour drive uh, from Seattle, or if you know where Spokane is, we're about an hour south of Spokane. Um, so we uh, we were founded in 1890 as Washington's original land grant institution. Um, and if you if you have been to Pull Pullman or you're familiar with Pullman, you'll know that we are uh, surrounded by wheat fields. It's just wheat fields galore all around us. Um, which I actually just found out that uh, Whitten County, where WSU is located, is the nation's leading wheat producer. So I actually didn't realize that. Um, having lived here my whole life, I didn't realize that. But um, uh, it's, it's wheat fields galore, which would make sense that when WSU was founded, it was set up as an agricultural school. Um, obviously, it's morphed into what it is today, but at the time of its inception, it was set up for agricultural uh, agriculture specifically. A um, little bit more, we have 125 years of alumni legacy, um, which I'll be speaking to uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, regarding the College of Business, and specifically the Carson College of Business, we have 60 years of grad business education, uh, 20 years of online of perfecting online degree programs, and then we also have an international network of corporate and academic alliances. And I, again, I'll be speaking to those uh, later on in the presentation. So I'm going to kick it back to you, Carlos. 
Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so I believe uh, that we are into um, Matt's portion of the presentation, military veteran students. So uh, Matt, I'll kick it over to you. All right, great. Hey, like you said, uh, Military Veteran Affair, uh, Affairs Manager at Washington State University for the Carson College of Business. I just want to touch on a few of the benefits that are available to our military students. Um, there's an applica application fee waiver. Um, we, we, uh, we don't have any late fees for our students. Oftentimes, the VA takes a long time processing things. Um, and we have a, a team here that's ready to support you throughout your journey, especially if you're an active duty military member and still out there hacking the mission. Uh, we have really three pillars in our programming. One is to make sure that you reduce the cognitive load for you here while you're going through this program. The second one is to try and backfill some of those professional development pieces that you may not have received as, as a member of the military. And the third piece is to create uh, a community, a professional community of veterans in the military. And so we, we do a lot of work trying to network with our, um, our military students and try to connect you to folks in industry. So if you're in transition or if you're post-transition and still trying to figure things out, we can support you in that work. If you have any questions regarding um, our programs, our policies, um, please feel free to reach out to me or, uh, or talk to your enrollment about, advisor about what's going on. And, and I really look forward to talking to you. So thanks for being here, and I look forward to the rest of the session. Excellent, Matt. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that insight. Uh, it's a great group there. So let's move on to the uh, MBA overview. Uh, this is uh, a, a great subject, and I'm sure a lot of you will have some questions about, but the program itself is 100% online. Um, there is no need to go to campus, uh, unlike some other people. Uh, that may require some sort of long weekend or, or something. The program is offered 100% online. Uh, can be completed in as few as 22 months or up to 29 months, and basically the difference would be the foundation courses. So um, let's just say you do not have a business background. Uh, there may be some additional courses you need to take, prerequisite foundation courses uh, for the program. So if you didn't have to take any, you could complete it in as little as 22. If you do have to take them all, you could uh, complete this program in 29 months. Uh, we do offer four concentrations for this program, uh, marketing, finance, hospitality, man business management, and international business. The program itself is 100% asynchronous as well, meaning uh, it fits around your schedule, right? There is no specific time uh, that you need to be anywhere. Uh, we do have live uh, sessions. Uh, we do highly recommend you attend as many as possible, but we do understand uh, life happens. So uh, if you cannot make a live lecture, they are recorded for you and you can play them back at your convenience. We do offer uh, a one class at a time uh, structure, right? So uh, the way it's laid out is you just basically take one class at a time. A foundation course uh, would be five weeks and a core course would be seven weeks at a time, and we'll get into that a little bit later, plus a capstone project at the end. Uh, we do offer small class sizes, approximately 35 students, so there's a lot of um, chance for interaction. Um, back and forth, it's, it's a great learning uh, environment and experience. And we also have uh, international field study, which is optional, which obviously with COVID last year and coming back this year, um, it's, it's fluid, but it is awesome. And we can get into more detail about that as well. From admissions requirements, um, all students would need to complete the application. There's an online application that would be sent to you as far as documentation goes. Um, it's a pretty simple process. We would need any and all transcripts from any school that you attended officially, right, sent over. Uh, we are asking for a current updated resume. Uh, while there are no minimum uh, requirements as far as work experience, we would like to see what you do now and kind of what led you to your path of where you are now today. Uh, we are requiring one letter of recommendation and a statement of purpose. Uh, from a GPA format, we are looking for a minimum of a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. Uh, GMAT waivers are available for qualified applicants, and we'll get a little bit more detail about that. Um, but successful candidates typically submit a GMAT score of about 550 or better. Uh, helps with the admissions process. Tuition right now currently uh, is $855 per credit hour. Uh, you'll notice a little note, 750 per credit hour for military affiliated students. 
So the range anywhere could be, in, in going back to those foundation courses, uh, $30,780 if you didn't have to take any, um, to 44460 credit hours if you had to take them all. So again, it's 36 to 52 credits. That's why the discrepancy. However, uh, talking to one of us would be able to kind of help you narrow that down and get you a more accurate picture um, during this process. So the GMAT waiver. Let's talk this talk about this a little bit. Um, there are several ways to uh, get it. Uh, if you've previously earned a graduate or professional degree, so am I. Uh, five plus years of progressive work experience and a 3.0 GPA or higher. A STEM degree in either science, technology, engineering, or mathematics with a 3.0 GPA or higher with no experience required. A business degree from an AACSB accredited institution with a 3.0 GPA or higher with no experience. And for those, you know, and again, we've, we've all had that college experience as well, um, but if you do have 10 plus years of progressive experience and a GPA a little lower than 3.0 or 2.79 uh, GPA or higher uh, is another way. Uh, we all know that literally this is a case-by-case -case basis, so if you do some have some situation that doesn't fit kind of nicely in this box, we can definitely talk and go over it and see if there's something that we can do or, you know, talk about your situation uh, independently as well. So the next slide here, this is a sample or a snapshot of what a potential schedule would look like. It gives you two scenarios. Uh, if you look at the top one with the MBA foundations, uh, this is an individual, like I said, that maybe did not go through a business program um, that needs to take the foundation courses. Uh, foundation courses, because they're five weeks at a time, you can actually fit three of those classes into one typical 16-week semester. So for example, you would take BA 500 for the January 10th to February 13th. You would have about a week off, and then you'd go into spring two, uh, taking foundations and operation management from the 21st to March 27th, and then the next day flipping right into BA 504, the foundations and finance from March 28th to May 1st, but that would encapsulate your whole spring semester starting in January. If you did not have to take any foundation courses uh, and just went straight into the core courses, those are seven weeks long. Start on the same day, but you would start, let's say, in BA 514 for business analytics, and you would take that from January 10th to the 27th. You'd have a, uh, about a week or so off, and then you would jump into spring two with marketing 506. Uh, everything is laid out for you here. Uh, through Canvas, very accessible and broken out by week. So week one, your assignments, what's due, when it's due, week two, so on threads. Um, it's a great experience, but again, easily keep a track with what's due what week so that you can plan accordingly. MBA certificates. So MBA certificates, so graduate certificates are, are basically your um, concentration courses, okay? So the way it works, so if you were to enter your MBA program and you wanted to get a marketing concentration, then basically you're gonna graduate with your MBA degree alongside a graduate level certificate in marketing. Uh, there are no additional courses, there's no additional costs. It's just something else that will help you set yourself apart from your peers when you graduate and competition out there. And again, it's just another thing to reinforce um, your educational background and what you're specialized in. Um, if you do decide, right, that the MBA right now is not the right timing or, or not a need at the moment, then we do offer these graduate level certificates as standalone programs. And at the end, we also offer, if you look a little below, a uh, certificate in general business administration. And, and those for those folks, again, we mentioned that they may not have that business background that um, needed to take those foundation courses. So if you did complete five of those, seven of those courses, you would receive an MBA certificate in general business administration. So the next piece of the puzzle is student support. So we like to offer a lot of support here at WSU and it starts right now, right? It's just what you're doing, uh, learning more about the program, attending webinars and uh, moving on to speaking to enrollment advisors like myself and my team. Uh, our role here is to help answer any additional questions, literally walk you through the process, and more importantly, just determine if this is right for you. 
um, help you see the picture from beginning to end in terms of the enrollment process. Uh, from there, uh, you'll meet into the student support advisors. Uh, these are the individuals that are going to take you literally to graduation. From the day you start class to the day you graduate. They'll help with everything from registrations, um, any questions, resources, literally anything you need during your time here, they're going to be that resource for you to lean on um, for any questions at all. We also offer a very strong tech support, being an online program, obviously. Um, there's tons of it, you know, not just your traditional help desk, which we do offer, but specific programs, um, anything that you can think of, there, there's a support uh, folk for it. Um, and they would definitely help you answer any of your questions that you had. Uh, we do like to keep smaller class sizes, as mentioned earlier. However, there are some larger classes here down the road, and what we do is we just divide those up into sections. So you would have section instructors as well. So again, our goal is to support you in every way possible and get you the answers that you're looking for as quickly as possible. So we want to make sure that there's people available to you, at, accessible to you all the time uh, so to get you those answers as prompt as we can. Now I'd like to turn it over uh, to Chris for a day in the life. <clears throat> hey, thank you. Uh, so yeah, um, the the courses courses are very well structured. Um, I, I, my my biggest recommendation really is that uh, you know read the syllabus, plan and plan your day because at the end of it, it all comes down to time management. We're all adults. We're all busy. We all have several things to do. In our personal lives, and uh, in my particular case, I have you know children, and I work as a professional engineer and a subject matter expert in my field of study for the Boeing company. So, you know, juggling 50, 60 hour a week job on top of uh, pursuing my master's in business um, and still being a, a father of two children um, really required uh, time management, and so. You know, understand the timelines, make a timeline for yourself, put whatever works for you. If it means you got to put reminders on your calendars or your iPhone or your, 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 your Android device or whatever it is that works for you to stay on top of things, it's very important. Uh, one of the other things, too, is it really depends on, you know, what your comfort level is for each of the classes. If you have experience in uh, in, in marketing or you have a really strong math background and, you know, marketing and accounting and economics and things like that might be a little easier for you. But uh, if those are things that you tend to uh, require a little bit more time, then, you know, gauge, gauge the assignment as best you can and try to plan, uh, you know, some extra time for that, that week to, um, to, 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 to finish all your deliverables. Uh, you know, for me, you know, I, I would go to work, I'd enjoy um, my time at work, and I would leverage uh, the conversations with my, my senior level management and director all the time. Every time I would walk, walk in uh, to, to work, I would, you know, have my engineering hat on, but then I'd also be putting my business hat on. And so for me, it was uh, really awesome to be able to uh, get that that prowess, that 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 strong certificate, that that achievement of a master's in business, uh, in order for me to, you know, be able to say, hey, not only am I an engineer and I know how to build stuff, but I also can do it with cost in mind and and being able to help project uh, the value. And when you get to capstone classes, um, Dr. Jordan is an amazing. Is, is an amazing professor. He he's very energetic, um, very very uh, well well put together class. And and you know find find your team early. Uh, that that's the other big recommendation I got for you. Like as you go th through your journey, you're going to have uh, courses that are going to require a lot of group work. Uh, remember those people and ask them hey, what their track looks like and when they're going to hit capstone. And if y'all hitting capstone A at the same time, then, you know, you already kind of have a good working relationship with somebody and uh, you can, can grow to build that because in capstone, you get to choose your teams. And so uh, that was, th that was, you know, one of the, the, the key things for me is that, you know, understanding early, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of people that I worked with before, and then formulating a team uh, to execute the end goal of of the the what you'll 
find out, I'm not going to spoil it for you, what you find out in your capstone project um, was very helpful, very, very helpful. And uh, anytime you do group projects, just make sure you understand and respect each other's time zones, uh, especially if you have teams that are um, military based and are doing, uh, you know, tours or, or wherever that they're located at that time, um, whether it's people are on the East Coast or in Japan or, or you know, in Europe, uh, be very, you know, make sure that you're planning for that. So that y'all understand, um, you know, what each other's deliverables are, are for a given project and to make sure that y'all uh, meet meet the requirements of the assignments. And other than that, just, you know, have fun. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's it is a lot of work, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's well worth it. And, you know, you can get as much out of it as you want or as little out of it as you want. And so, it's really up to you to decide how deep you want to go into these subjects because the subjects can get pretty deep and you can go deeper if you choose to read more about it. And I, I really enjoyed marketing. So I got my, I got, I got a focus in marketing and um, one of my favorite classes was how they do all of the different advertisements and how they, they block the time and how they do target marketing and, and, and how they do um, analysis of, of, where their target markets are and, and being able to come up with uh, slogans and, and different types of catchphrases and their deliverable media to, um, you know, persuade someone or plant a seed, if you will, uh, to invest in, in their products. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's about all from me and look forward to answering any questions that you have later and uh, I'll turn it back over to Carlos. Thank you. Chris, thank you so much. That was fantastic. I'm sure there'll be some questions here at the end for you. I uh, usually always is. Um, but I want to turn it back over to Mitch to talk about what I think is, is what sets us apart uh, about networking and, and how we do it. So, Mitch, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Carlos. Um, so uh, as Carlos mentioned earlier in uh, this presentation, this webinar, uh, the program is 100% online. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that, that um, – for those of you who may not have interest in networking or coming to campus, it is 100% online with no residency requirements. Um, you don't have to come to campus for any orientation or anything. Um, <clears throat> that being said, we do have quite a big, set, a large segment of our students where even though the, the um, course structure is 100% online, they do still want those networking opportunities. And in my opinion, uh, those are really important, especially with a 100% online program, uh, the opportunities to meet your, your classmates and your peers and staff and faculty face to face, I think are really important because that is one thing you're not getting in your day to day um, interaction within this program. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to highlight a few of the networking opportunities that we, we do hold. Um, and uh, I'm actually going to skip this first bullet and come back to it. I'm going to actually talk about the Carson College Power Breakfast. Uh, we hold this twice a year. In fact, we just held uh, the Power Breakfast in Seattle a couple weeks ago. And um, the, the speakers, we had um, a speaker, uh, the executive director from uh, Watching Employers for Racial Equity. We had the president and CEO of Puget Sound Energy. Um, previous speakers have included the founder and CEO of Tutabella, the, the pizzeria. Um, let's see, we've had um, Kyle Smith, our, our men's basketball coach, speak. We've had authors. We've had coaches, um, all, all sorts of stuff. But Really, what it is is, is an opportunity that Carson College puts on this breakfast um, that um, invites students, um, alumni, staff, faculty, stakeholders, community members to come in and, and just enjoy a breakfast on the college and listen to um, a panel speak or, or a speaker. And it's usually from 7.30 to 9 in the morning. Um, so if you, if you need to you know, rush to work after, you should still have some time. Um, like I said, we do that every year, <clears throat> every fall. Typically, it's the last week, uh, uh, fall in the last week of September in Seattle. But I did want to let you all know that we are also um, holding a power breakfast in Spokane as well. So for those that might be interested, uh, that date will be April 27th, um, 22. 
uh, that there's no information on that yet as far as location and who the speakers will be, but there is that date already. So if that is something that might be of interest to you, um, go ahead and pencil that in, April 27th. And then we, we will do that um, twice a year, every year. Um, the next one I'm also going to skip, the International Field Study, because I believe the, the following slide after this is on that, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, for now. Other opportunities are the Coop's first shows. What that is is basically a live trade show also held uh, currently a few times in Seattle. I think they're working on, they were working on doing one in Spokane, um, but then uh, the pandemic hit and they had to, they had to sideline it. But I think they are bringing that back as well. So for sure in Seattle, as well as, as Spokane, but it's an opportunity for um Coog students, Coog alums, stakeholders, community members to interact with Coog owned businesses. It's basically um, it's, it's it's laid out like a trade show where you can just go network um, with various Coog owners and Coog owned businesses. It's a pretty cool event. Uh, typically, President Schultz will speak at the event. They'll have some networking receptions, some after parties. So that, that's a pretty cool event if you're interested in that. Uh, we do have the Alumni Association events and watch parties. And and one of the things I want to highlight uh, regarding the Alumni Association is we do have one of the largest alumni associations uh, in the nation. Um, <clears throat> it's very cult-like, actually. Uh, you, you could be pretty much anywhere in the world, and if you're wearing a WSU uh, shirt or hat or something WSU-affiliated, you're likely to get somebody to scream go Googs to you from, like, across – across the airport or wherever you're at it's uh it's, it's pretty crazy but there it's a very close-knit group um for those of you who might be interested in the alumni association i would highly recommend it you can actually join as a student you get a really um nice discounted price to do it as a student but one of the things that they do offer they offer multiple events and if you go to the alumni association website you can put in your area or where like the cities that you might be close to and see what events might be happening but um which is cool because especially being an online student if you're not in you know the pacific northwest but you're still looking for those interaction opportunities the alumni association is the best place to look and one of the cool one of the big things they do is they'll do these watch parties so specifically for the football games um, you, you they'll pick a place where everybody can meet up and watch wsu football games um, so it's a pretty cool event that they offer. Um, the, another one, and probably the biggest event for us, is commencement on campus. Uh, we do hold a, we do hold one in December for the summer and fall graduation, uh, but our big one is actually in May for the spring commencement. And it's a beautiful time of year. So if you haven't been to WSU's campus or been to the Palouse, um, May is a beautiful time to come uh, come check it out. But we do. We do hold commencement on campus, uh, and then the night before, we will do a college reception with um, not specific to just the MBA students. Um, PhD students might be there that are graduating. Undergrad students might be there that are graduating. Um, and then, again, staff, faculty are there to celebrate with you. Um, our dean, um, Dean Hunter, will typically give a toast. So it's just a nice, it's a nice time um, to, to celebrate your accomplishments, but, again, um, if you were going to pick one time of year to come to campus, I would highly recommend it be that time because it's just beautiful. Uh, I'm going to actually kick it back up. I had skipped that first, uh, the, the first networking opportunity, and I'm, I'm going to come back to that now. We do offer um, uh, MBA meet and greets and happy hour events. In fact, we just held um, – our first one in two years, we held that as part of the, the Power Breakfast week that I was talking about. So um, to align with people's schedules, the, more, the, the night of the Power Breakfast, we held uh, an MBA meet and greet for, uh, for our students, and we held it at Flatstick Pub. Um, we had held our first one a few years ago uh, in 2019 at Flatstick, and it went over really well. And then we were trying to find hot spots on the map to see where we could branch out and do more of them. But then again, the pandemic hit, so we had to sideline those as well. So after what, 18 months, we finally held our first NBA meet and greet again. And we had about 40 students show up um, to Flatstick Pub. I, I personally think that's a great opportunity. Like I said, it's a chance for you to meet and network with your, your classmates and your peers. 
um, most of whom you probably haven't met before. And the reason I wanted to say this second to last is because Christopher actually attended our last meet and greet, and I was hoping he could uh, just spend a few minutes talking about his uh, his experience. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, it definitely. So I got the echo um, ever since I put my. So I just let a dirty secret out here. My electrical engineering degree was from University of Washington. So I'm both a, a husky and a coog. So I, I, things are pretty interesting in, in, at my house. But uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I, I definitely will. I will admit I get more 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 people saying "Go Cougs" to me than I ever do say "Go Dogs." So I got I, you know WSU definitely wins the cake on that one. Um, in in terms of uh, the meet and greets, they are definitely a wonderful uh, s- social activity where. Uh, you get to meet your peers and you get to talk about, you know, experiences that, that they're going through or that they've had and you get a nice way to, to network and get to see someone face to face. There's a lot of good conversation that happens. They're, they're, they provide good food, some swag. It's really, really nice to, to, to bring home with you and things. And uh, it's just a really, a really good time to, you know, enjoy each other's company and, and, and see, you know, who you can keep connected with as you go through your journey i'm um, going through it alone is some people like to go through their journeys alone um i myself am a pretty sociable person kind of rare for an engineering type but uh, i definitely uh enjoy social events social ga- gatherings and speaking to people so uh it's one of those those things that i really enjoy and i think most mbas are, are like that and um i I think it's a great opportunity to get out there and and and, and meet your peers. Uh, wh- one last thing that I'll leave you with is, you know, networking and getting those connections uh, through your peers through these meet and greets is definitely a, a huge deal. But you know, wherever you're working too, uh, you know, once you wear that hat of I'm in an MBA program, leverage it. Go talk to your management, talk to your senior management, get to know your director, network, network in that way as well. So it's multidimensional, not just you know, what, what one way, don't get me wrong. It's really awesome. The meet and greets are great. And all the people that you're going to meet are amazing. Uh, but also take that to the, to, to also in another, in another direction where, you know, at your current, your current job, start to get to know your director, start, start bouncing these ideas and these concepts that you're starting to learn off of them. And that's going to get them to recognize you. That's going to get the visibility for you to start being able to be uh, noticed and, perhaps once you complete your MBA in line for a promotion. So uh, really, really, really good um, opportunities in, in both directions, but networking is very important. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Christopher. And I, I couldn't say it any better. I completely agree 100% with everything you said. Networking is absolutely crucial. In fact, when I'm out on at recruitment events, you know, a lot of people ask me about the benefits of the program, and I tell them, yeah, of course you're going to learn, you know, a wide variety of, you know, of business topics, but in my opinion, just as important and sometimes even more important is that network that you're going to create and, and keep not only in the program, then, but then when you graduate. So that I appreciate you bringing that up, Christopher, because that's absolutely true. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, so the, so the meet and greets, we, we are currently, we hold one once a year in Seattle. We are going to, Similar to how we do in Seattle, we're going to hold one um, same day as the Spokane Power Breakfast uh, in Spokane. There's actually also a flat stick pub in Spokane, Kugo, and so I think we're going to hold it there as well. Um, But uh, if you are not in the Pacific Northwest, um, don't don't panic too much. One of the one of the things on our docket is to look at the, the heat map. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We want to see where, um, you know, we have groups of students and then branch out this uh, online MBA meet and greet to various parts of the nation. Uh, so, for example, just off the top of my head, I know we have a, a pretty big student population in Southern California. Um, we have um, a decent population in around Phoenix, uh, Arizona, um, some hot spots in Texas. So one of the things we're, we're going to be looking at is expanding um, uh, these, these MBA meet and greets um, outside of the Pacific Northwest, but obviously the reason we, we currently hold them in the Pacific Northwest is a majority of our current students are in and around the Seattle area. 
So, so that's that's why we're currently holding it there. So, uh, I would say, you know, if you're interested, let us know. And in, if you're interested in those meet and greets, um, and then keep your eye out for uh, for any of those hot spots and those meet and greets that that um, might be headed your way. The last thing I wanted to do um, was let Matt Beer talk about uh, some of the networking opportunities he holds for the military and veteran students. He does some cool things, so I'm actually going to kick this last bullet point over to Matt. All right, thanks, Mitch. Um, yeah, to your point, you know, we do have a lot of students uh, here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, in terms of our military affiliated students, um, we have a lot other places too, or literally around the world, and so it's important to us to provide opportunities for them to connect um, no matter where they are. So we do a lot of things online. So every spring at a military all call, we invite um, industry and um, uh, military uh, experts, I guess, and to talk about the value of veterans in the workforce. And so that's been a really good program. We also partner with some nonprofits um, like 50 Strong to try and connect our students um, to, to corporations and also programs like SkillBridge, um, if you may have heard of that. Um, I guess the last thing, I won't get into too many details, but I would just say that, you know, Mitch mentioned at the beginning that the Cougar Alumni Network is pretty, um, is pretty creepy. I am one, so, you know, uh, I'll, I'll self-identify here. But the military network is also very strong, and so my reason for coming to Washington State was to combine those two things because I think they can kind of create lightning in a bottle for these students. And so I'll just end with that, and um, uh, if you have any questions at the end, I look forward to answering those. Awesome. Thanks. And then I think, uh, Carl, if we could just go to the, the next slide, please. Awesome. Absolutely. The International Field Study. So this is another opportunity for you to, to network. Um, and again, no surprise here, has been sidelined for the last couple of years due to COVID. But we are on track right now for, for holding our International Field Study this next summer. Um, it is definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The, the trip itself is a week-long experience. I think uh, all in all, it ends up being about 10 or 11 days, depending on where you're traveling from. Um, but it's a nice mix of uh, not only networking with your, your, um, your classmates and your colleagues, um, but you will also have a nice mix of business activities where you might be doing some, uh, some business tours or some company tours. Um, also with some of the cultural activities in your area. Um, Debbie Mundell, who teaches uh, BA 599, so um, if you start the program, your very first course will be BA 599. Uh, you'll be taking that with Debbie Mundell. She's the one who actually t uh, leads this trip and takes the students. So it's a nice opportunity um, to just to meet and network with her as well. She's a cool, she's a, she's a cool person. So. Um, some of the past trips have included Chile, uh, Finland, and Estonia. This year, like I said, July 22, uh, they are going to Prague. Um, last thing I want to say about that is, of course, it's not it's not mandatory. We don't require uh, students to go on an international uh, field study, so it is completely optional. But we definitely encourage it if you have the opportunity. Um, second, uh, second thing I want to mention on that: if you do. Uh, know that you want to go on this trip and you have, um, let's say, a business interest or something you might be interested in seeing in Prague, I would definitely let Debbie Mundell know. Um, we can't make any promises, but with enough lead, uh, with enough lead time, we, we do have a fair amount of um, connections and uh, business connections uh, in the places that we visit. So, um, for example, one of the trips, uh, this was for the EMBA event, but when they had traveled to China, um, there were a few students who worked uh, uh, in the aerospace industry. So um, with enough lead time, they actually got to tour Boeing in China, um, the R&D in Boeing in China. So if you, if you know you might be wanting to go and have some interest, let Debbie know we might be able to accommodate um, specific visits around your interests. So, yeah, def definitely a cool trip if you can make it. Fantastic, Mitch. Thank you so much for all that information. Uh, that networking piece is, is just huge. Um, the relationships you build here will be resources and friends the rest of your life. Um, it's, it's just it's an invaluable piece that I, I think really sets us apart 
um, for the amount of work they put in. And again, the the ability to to network uh, long beyond and, and after you graduate. So uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, so at this point in time, I'd like to move over to the um, Q and A portion. Uh, we have some excellent questions here, but for those that do have to leave early, um, please take a few minutes this week to connect with your advisor. I'm sure they'll reach out um, so they have the opportunity to answer any additional questions you may think of after this presentation, um, you know, after you've had time to digest, but more importantly, uh, if you are interested in the process to kind of go over maybe your unique, unique situation, uh, everybody's situation is their own, so want to make sure that we're giving you the information that's pertinent to you. Um, our next start date is January 10th. Uh, 2022. Um, the deadline for that is December 6th. Um, I encourage everyone, if you are interested in this program, um, the deadline, the holidays, Thanksgiving, and everything coming up, this is one of those scenarios where uh, sooner is better. Um, it, it's just always the way it is. Uh, you know, we do a great job of turning things around, and we have some good questions on that. But uh, again, just with the holidays, we'd like to everybody just not worry about that, right? Let the process take care of itself. and and enjoy the holidays so we can get the answers back to you well before class start times. Um, so we'll kick it off with some questions, um, some questions that were flying in here. Um, and let, let's start off with a question for Christopher, um, if you're still on. Uh, with the course being online, how hard is it to make connections with your classmates? I know you mentioned that um, you found your team early, but you know, was it something that was hard, easy, available? Just if you can elaborate a little bit on that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, it is It is true. Sometimes it's it's a little bit difficult to uh, make connections in the live sessions. But, like, uh, when you break out into your um, your, your, your instructor-run um, session, so they have the live session, they have, like, an, with, where the main professor is giving the lecture, and then they have the breakout instructor sections where – you're able to uh, have a smaller group of people to ask the, the instruct a, a different instructor, the session instructor, the um, <clears throat> the questions for like the week's material or, or any anything about reinforcing concepts. And for, sometimes that's that's a good a good place to you know start having those start making those connections and maybe ask like, hey, do you want to you know talk on Zoom or you know Slack is another thing like um, there's you know, Slack. Uh, groups that get to ask about those because there they're, they're are, are, are teams that actually build a Slack uh, community for WSU and people talk um, about you know their experience and getting together and stuff like that uh, on Slack as well. So th there are there are ways, but uh, the main way for me was uh, in the classes. There's several classes that you're going to have that uh, have group projects, and so. Uh, once you you start getting those group project classes um, on your plate, <clears throat> you, the teams get assigned to you. So you're being forced to work with others and uh, just kind of you know figure out their style and and you know get to know them better and 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 start building the connection that way as well. So yeah, you know, it's kind of a, it's kind of a difficult way to answer because it is online. So that's true. But there are definitely uh, there are definitely opportunities to, to connect, uh, but mainly you either have to be in the live presentations uh, to make those back and forth connections with people, or in the session instruction live sessions to be able to do it. Otherwise, it's almost like cold calling somebody and saying, "Hey, um, you want to you want to talk?" Well, I don't know who are you type of thing. So. But that would be my recommendation: is attend attend as many of the session instructions as you can, and and also the live sessions, and and then really focus on um, the the asking the questions about you know Slack team chats and things like that. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate that elaboration. Um, some other questions. I know there's a couple on the foundation classes. Uh, how do you determine foundation courses are needed? Uh, that's a fantastic question. Um, so basically, what we're going to request are your transcripts, right? It's based on prior educational history. Uh, there's a lot that goes into it, um, and again, everything is case by case. Um, so what we would suggest is um, to determine that, uh, we would just request your transcripts. We can, um, for a quick look, um, as advisors, um, look at unofficials to kind of just kind of give you an idea. Um, but again, we would require those officials, so we would require that anyway, so we might as well do it. But 
um, we could uh, evaluate your um, previous education to determine if there's any possible foundation courses that might be eligible to be waived. Um, you know, we'd work through that uh, specifically one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, another question here, how quickly after completing my application will I hear back if I've been accepted into the program? That's also a fantastic question. Um, I, I will say uh, we do a great job, and uh, Mitch, anybody keep me honest, but we do. I think we do a pretty good job of turning around um, anywhere between that two to three week is what we, we try to, to, to stick with. But I will also tell you, you know, it's like anything else. Uh, the closer you get to the deadline, the funnel gets smaller, you know, more people um, getting the applications in late, um, so more to review, so it could take a little longer. So, again, that, that falls under the, um, if you do have an interest in the program, the sooner you get it in. I know there are deadlines, and, and that's great. Um, but uh, if you do have an interest, uh, the sooner the application goes in, the sooner we can get you that answer, uh, the more time you'll have to uh, get things done prior to class start. Um, another good question here. Now, this one goes out uh, to Matt, if you're still on. Um, are there any special services or offerings for military-affiliated students, uh, special military groups, anything like that? You know, again, I know you kind of mentioned a little earlier, but anything uh, specifically affiliated for students and offerings for them? Yeah, sure you bet. And just to highlight, when we talk about military-affiliated students, we're talking about active duty, veteran, guard, reserve, and there's thousands as well, so it's important to define who those folks are. Um, most of our offerings center around professional career-type development, so again, we work with the nonprofits and with some folks here on staff to create some workshops periodically throughout the semester for those folks. Um, and another one that we do here also is some opportunities to access professional coaching. Uh, we found that that's real important for folks who are um, transitioning from active duty, military, or long-term service to something else. And so that's just a, that's just a little bit of what we do here. So um, kind of give you a taste. And again, happy to answer questions offline for anyone who may have further questions. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. Um, let me see here. A couple more. Um, does the business world look more favorably toward traditional MBA programs slash degrees versus online MBA programs? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I definitely don't think so. And, and, you know, with the world and the way it's changing, more online programs um, that are being offered today than before, I think the traditional way of looking at education is, is gone, right? I think more and more opportunities, uh, busy lifestyles, the way we – uh, work and live and, and work balance and all of that, um, I think it's more commendable that people are trying to go back to school, period, whether it's online or on campus. And the reality is getting to campus and traffic and all of that is just, is just not realistic in a lot, for a lot of people. Um, so, and again, you know, this is one of those scenarios where the accrediting bodies and, and the reputation and, the, you know, the rankings and all the things that, that we hold um, uh, of value and, and again, you know, it goes back to, I think Mitch said it earlier and Chris, but, you know, we get a lot of people that refer to us through their own personal experiences, uh, business owners, um, employees, managers, you know, high level um, CEOs, you know, that refer their employees to us, right? Knowing the program's online. So that's a great question. No, and, and, and again, it's an online program, but again, it's not like, you know, it's not going to say online on your degree, right? So, um, but that's a great question. Um, let me see here. I think that is all the questions we have. Let me just make sure. If anybody has any, they can feel free to throw it in there. Uh, is there a minimum GPA requirement? There, so we we look at individuals as mentioned throughout the slides as, as a 3.0, right? However, there are certain circumstances uh, where we we can evaluate for for a lower GPA, right? So uh, case by case basis. So what I would suggest is that you reach out, speak to advisor. Let's get your transcripts together. Let's let's 
paint the picture, right? What do we do? You know, what was the scenario, um, you know, that may have caused you to have a lower GPA? You know, an example would be, you know, I started out in pre-med, wasn't for me, turned around, did marketing, and did really well. So um, we, every, every transcript tells a story, um, and I would definitely recommend that you reach out and talk to your individual um, representative. Um, they'll be able to help guide you further in answering that question directly. multiple courses be taken at the same time in order to complete the program faster. So the program is designed um, to take one course at a time by course offerings, right? So um, certain courses are offered at certain times and it's not necessarily that all courses are offered at all times, right? So there's a, that's a very big what if question or, or maybe question, but um, your student support when, when you do get accepted into the program, they lay out uh, your degree plan in advance so that you'll have plenty of time to see how it would look from time to start to finish. Um, if there's anything specific that could be had, that's a conversation for them. It's not recommended. Um, I will tell you that. Um, you know, working professionals, you are at a master's level program. This it is going to um, challenge you like it's supposed to, right? So if you're working full time and taking a course, it should give you what you need. Um, but again, that's, that's something that we can dig in deeper if there's a certain scenario or something like that we could we could look into. Um, Mitch, keep me honest, is that is anybody out there that's accurate or um, yeah, I'm I would, sure that's uh, yeah, I would say that. Carlos, let, let me weigh in on that just a second, um, if that's okay. So based yeah. on the enrollment, the, the courses are set up on a carousel system. So almost all of the courses are only offered one at a time. So what that means for you is you could be in your first core class. Let's say you just joined the program and your first class is Marketing 506. You are taking that Marketing 506 with everybody else in the program who still needs 506. So you might be in your first class sharing a class with somebody who is in their very last class. So, um, so when it when we do say one at a time, it really is one at a time because that is truly the only one offered for that session. Yeah, and I'll just add that you know, unless you really think you you could do it, I mean, I I'll tell you, seven weeks goes by fast. I mean, you'll be surprised how fast it goes. Um, Every week just seems to blow by. That's why time management is extremely important. Very, very important. And then again, you can Thank go you. as deep. You can go as deep, or as you can go as deep as you want too. Like I mean, if if you find yourself having some extra time, maybe research a topic a little bit more in depth and and see if you can apply it. You know that those are are additional things if you find yourself ahead. But, you know, I, I, it was my experience was that I, I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't felt, feel like I was behind, but I was always having to manage my time to make sure that I was on track. And, and I, you know, when you have a bunch of team deliverables and stuff, it's very important that you don't let your team down and you pull your weight. So um, keep that in mind, too. Awesome. Thank you so much, gentlemen. A um, couple more here. Um, this one actually is for... Mitch, um, what are your thoughts on earning an MBA from the same school as your undergrads? Is there benefits, drawbacks? You know, again, WSU grads, uh, any thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think for a long time, like for a long time, there was this stigma, and I don't really know even where it came from, where they basically, you know, they basically said if you got your undergrad at one location, you needed to do your master's at a different location. And then if you're doing a Ph.D., you, that needed to be a third location. In my opinion, that has that totally gone by the wayside. Um, I think it's totally acceptable for you to get your, your MBA from, from WSU if you got your undergrad from WSU. In fact, we have a huge percentage of our students are WSU undergrad alum. Um, so, yeah, I think that stigma is long gone. I don't even know really why or where it came from. 
Um, but it, I think it's totally acceptable because the other thing you have to keep in mind too is you're going to, for the most part, have entirely new. Well, depending on when you finished your undergrad, you're going to have you know completely different faculty with you know higher level learning objectives and different topics. Um, so it's not just a regurgitation of, of what you did in your undergrad. So uh, I would definitely not be worried about that. Like I said, we have a huge percentage of our students who, who have their undergrad from WSU. Fantastic. And I think any additional questions, feel free. And we have time for a couple more. Um, this is one that you may be able to help me with. I, I don't know the answer to this one as far as percentages go, but what percentage of students are located in the Pacific Northwest? I, I know that I talk to people all over the country, so um, Mitch, you have an answer to that one? Uh, yes. In fact, if you give me one second, I can probably give you an exact percentage. Um, give me one second. Then we say it's, go it's to the best resource. Um, let me see. So we, it's just shy of 50%. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, well, that's the last question that I have. Um, we have, we're just about just shy of four minutes to go within the hour. I want to thank everybody for their time today. Um, thank you to Mitch, Matt, and Chris uh, for answering all the questions. Uh, I'm sure um, uh, that, that we can answer any additional questions that you do have. I know that a representative will be reaching out to you. Um, just to follow up, you will be receiving this via uh, email this presentation as well. So, again, thank you everybody for your time uh, today. Um, go Cougs, and I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Go Cougs. <laughs>